please don't forget to like comment and subscribe so tell us about uh, jo jo cheez and uh, and why 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 the ulus was named uh, golden golden horn well so the jo cheez to explain to um everybody where is the way we call the descendant of jo cheez the eldest son of genghis khan so the eldest son of Genghis Khan died before his father but his uh, sons and great sons um uh, received as a um, as a legacy uh, a number of subject peoples and a number of lands mainly in the north of Eurasia like southern Siberia uh in uh, also Volga Ural area so the Russia what is you know western Russia today a part of Kazakhstan they received north of Caucasus as well and a part of eastern Europe When I say they received it means that Genghis Khan said Georgia and his des and his descendants had to conquer and keep these areas it's part of their you know not only of their legacy but it's an also a, a the burden a task they have to conquer and and keep up all these people in this northwestern area So um the Georgia all these descendants of Georgia we know we know not all of them but i really try to reconstruct in my book who uh how many people they were how they developed how they were a few thousand in the beginning how they became more and more numerous i also work on the women i'm trying to understand um where they were coming from and so the construction of the lineage Georgia lineage is is a key issue of course um for this part of the mongol empire Now for the for the terminology I use in my book of course Jochi 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 Olus Jochi people but I also uh, like very much using the term uh, horde uh why because horde uh, under the you know the, the old term would be horda ordu ordo and it was used by the mongols themselves it was used even before the mongols by other nomadic people turkic people but uh, the mongols um gave to this uh term uh in, to this institution of court um a new meaning it became a, a a very strong imperial camp a strong imperial power it's a dynamic and it's a society uh, a nomadic big nomadic society it's a mobile institution and my book is really a, 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 a an attempt to describe and understand and analyze this incredible nomadic state institution uh the horde uh the, the the term itself i kept it because also today for us often it's very negative like a horde is a bunch of crazy excited people no at the time of the mongols it means something very organized very powerful very big it means something like state or nomadic regime if you want and um the um all the not only the westerners but all the neighbors of the mongols when they saw them coming when they saw the conquest they did not translate the term they kept the word horde because they were not because it was something new a new kind of organization so they didn't feel translating the the word and i mean in french for instance the word exists since the 13th century but it's the same in in Russian it's the same in German in many languages in Arabic as well we keep the word so uh the idea in my book was to show that by keeping this word and using it but with its real meaning we could you know start to change the way we write the history of the Mongol empire uh, so i uh, it was really important to keep it now why golden horde golden for the mongols mean mainly imperial horde It means very special horde, and powerful horde. That's that's the idea. So um, we can still use, of course, golden horde. That's the meaning. Uh, gold is, you know, the it's for for king. You see. <laughs> Hopefully, you liked this episode. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.